Today, our focus is on security best practices for ArcGIS Enterprise. That includes ArcGIS Server, Portal for ArcGIS, and some advanced options. We do strongly recommend knowledge of ArcGIS Server and Portal for ArcGIS prior to proceeding. Before we begin, let's briefly discuss this defense and death paradigm. Security plans have many layers of multiple levels of security. Layered security mechanisms increase the security of the system as a whole. Each feature discussed is considered a layer. Each of the layers that we discuss may or may not be applicable to your environment. We'll go into those in more in depth as we discuss them. Essentially, it is your responsibility to determine the level of risk that your organization is able to accept. Some organizations that promote a completely open data plan may not require the level of restrictions that we do at Esri internally in our secured operations. Other operations require that all of the security options that we have uh, be leveraged in their environments. Let's briefly review Arches Enterprise on-premises. In the middle here, we have the ArcGIS Enterprise instance there, comprised of ArcGIS Server, consuming some online content and services, and above that, we have some common clients of ArcGIS Enterprise, including desktop clients, web clients, and various other devices that we have. ArcGIS Enterprise is a simple, integrated, open solution that's available uh, for disseminating GIS content to a large group. Behind the scenes for ArcGIS Enterprise, we're going to focus on the three components that make up ArcGIS Enterprise on-premises. Those include Portal for ArcGIS, the GIS server itself, and the ArcGIS data store. We will not be focusing much on the web adapter today. Before we begin, we'd like to promote a simple tool that can help check for updates and notify you of patches that are available as we do regularly put out security patches on about a quarterly basis here. That's the Check for Updates tool. The Check for Updates tool can be scripted. Uh, documentation is available on how to do that under the documentation online for the Check for Updates tool. The important thing is that administrators regularly check to validate that patches for ArcGIS Enterprise have been downloaded and installed at the same frequency that administrators would check to validate that their Windows or other OS updates are available to be installed. Let's discuss our agenda today. <clears throat> to start with, we're going to be, be discussing ArcGIS Server. We're going to discuss enabling and using HTTPS, disabling the services directory, restricting cross-domain requests or cores requests, disabling the primary site administrator account, and we'll be promoting the scan server script that's available. First, we're going to review the ArcGIS server administrator directory, as this is where many of the updates that we'll need to make are made in. The admin directory provides an interface into the ArcGIS server site where many security settings are enabled. Let's talk about one of those settings now. The first item that we want to discuss is enabling and using HTTPS. HTTPS only is the default starting at 10.7. So 10.7 and 10.8 already have HTTPS only enabled. Earlier versions have a, support a mix of HTTP and HTTPS out of the box. Still, earlier versions start with supporting HTTP, and HTTPS is later configurable. HTTPS stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure. It is a critical step in ensuring that the information being transferred from the server to the client is encrypted. That's the first step that all organizations should take by now is at least having the option to encrypt traffic back and forth between the ArcGIS Enterprise instance and the client. Doing so helps protect against simple network sniffers. HTTPS also helps to ensure that non-repudiation is in place, meaning that the site and resource that I advertise as my site is actually my site and is not someone attempting to spoof my site. As we discussed, HTTPS only is enabled by default in 10.7 or higher. 
And we make these changes by going into the Arceus Server Administrative API, and going into Home, Security, Configuration, Update, and setting HTTPS requirements there. It cannot be overstated the importance of enabling HTTPS only. There are very few use cases these days that require plain text HTTP only. At a minimum, all sites should support both HTTP and HTTPS using a certificate provided by a certificate authority. The next item that we're going to discuss is disabling the services directory. By default, the services directory is enabled. The services directory disables a catalog of web services in HTML format. Esri does not recommend exposing the services directory on production servers. Disabling the services directory prevents Googlebots from cataloging your services and prevents folks from, uh, from, from taking an inventory of the items that you have, potentially for crawling, for scraping, or for enumerating your endpoints to allow a potential attack. When the ArcGIS Server Services directory is disabled, users who browse to the HTML interface will see a message that says the services directory is disabled. This does not interfere with your web applications consuming your web services. Web applications talk to web services using JSON or another format. The HTML output, the HTML interface of the services directory is simply to allow developers to have an easier understanding of how to work with your services. How do we disable the services directory? Similar to working with HTTP settings, we go into the server administrator directory. There, under Home, System, Handlers, REST, Services directory, you'll find an Edit button. When the Edit button is disabled, the services directory is disabled. At this point, I'm going to pass the presentation off to Jeff Smith, where he will discuss course settings. Another important uh, security thing to, to uh, take a look at is the course request. What is a course request? Well, it's a cross-domain request. And so this, sometimes these are hard to, uh, to understand what's going on. These are unique to JavaScript applications. So I've got a diagram here to kind of help you understand how it works. The purple box at the top is a client web browser. That browser accesses a JavaScript web application. Within that web application, it references one or more services on ArcGIS server. These are considered cross-domain requests because the ArcGIS server does not reside on the same machine where the JavaScript web application resides. Now, in a lot of cases, these types of requests can be made without what's considered a cores or a cross-origin resource sharing request. Um, but if the service requires, is a feature service or a GP service and requires a post request, then a, a cores request is required for this. Now, by default, ArcGIS server allows all cores requests. There are no restrictions there but it is something that's very easy to put in a, a restriction for. And to be frank, it is actually something that if you do a security scan um, using a, uh, a, a third party tool or anything like that, that's a very easy uh, security uh, feature to detect uh, whether or not cores is supported for anything or for any, yeah, I mean, whether or not uh, cores is open to every, everyone. So this is handled within the ArcGIS Server Administrator directory. As I said, by default, it's open to everything. It's got a little asterisk in there by default. Um, but you can certainly limit, and, I, and we uh, strongly recommend, if you know which web applications are going to be accessing your services, it is definitely recommended to uh, put in um, a comma-separated list of the various domain names where these web applications reside. Now bear in mind, this change does not restrict overall access to the web services at all. You'll see in my demo uh, coming up here that you can certainly still view, even with the restriction in place, you can still view the service without any issues. You just won't be able to edit or, or make post requests to that service. 
So let me jump to my demo to, to show you what's, how this works. So if I open up my Firefox browser, I'm going to go to the ArcGIS server administrator directory. Log in as an admin. And the um, cores restrictions are managed under system, handlers, rest, services directory. As I said, by default, the allowed origins is open to, to every, everyone or every domain. And it's, it's, uh, you've got the asterisk right here. So I'm going to change this. And I'm going to change it to HTTP www.arcgs.com. And you'll see why I'm, it's HTTP and not HTTPS. This is for this, this demonstration. So if I hit save, that means accessing a web application over HTTP on arcgs.com would be the only way that this course restriction is enforced. So let's open up a new tab, go out to my REST uh, services directory, and I've got a feature service already published with editing enabled under, uh, it's a hosted feature service. This is Colorado feature service. So all I want to do, I want to open this in ArcGIS Online Map Viewer. This is going to take us, open up a new window, and open it up here. Now notice the URL is HTTPS in this case, not HTTP. And as we expected, it, it displays, as we saw behind this, but we got the uh, warning message say, saying that editing is disabled. Layer Colorado seems to be on an internal network and it's not accessible. Uh, what's really going on here, if we take a look at the developer tools within Firefox, the easiest way to tell, if we go to console here, we can see the, um, the warning up here. It says cross origin request blocked. And it's blocked here because we didn't see the access control allow origin missing. If we want to actually see the request itself, let's go back to the network and refresh this page. And we open up this, and the URL that I want to look at has info in it. It's this URL right here. And this is what ArcGIS Online uses to determine whether the service supports cores or not. And you can see right here this origin header and the request header. It's HTTPS, www.arcgs.com. And in the response, it still comes back, but we don't see any of the access control allow origin or access control allow credentials headers. That's why we get this message right here. We click OK. Like I described earlier, you can still see it. We, we zoom in on it, it's still there. I can still click on it. You can see pop-ups, everything's all right there. Um, it's just we can't edit. The editing button is, is disabled because post requests aren't supported. Now let's jump back to our ArcGIS server administrator directory, edit this. Let's change this to an S. Save. Now jump back to this and let's do a, f a full refresh on this. Notice, okay, now we get a different, we get a sign-in window, we're already signed in. We'll click OK, and this uh, feature service comes up. Notice the editing button is enabled. We got no warning about um, it being uh, disabled or anything like that. In the developer tools, you'll notice we take a look at this uh, last request. Again, this is very similar to what we saw before, what I showed before. The origin is still HTTPS, but now, since we've updated the restrictions within the server administrator directory. The access control allow credentials header is here in the response. Likewise, the access control allow origin header is there. And that's what the browser uses to determine whether or not cores is supported. And that is also what ArcGIS Online, in this case, the web application in ArcGIS Online, uses to determine whether editing can be enabled or not. Jump back to this. All right. And now, I jump back from here. I want to go back and pass this back on to Randall. Randall? Thanks for that demo, Jeff. Our next step is disabling the primary site administrator, or the PSA account. This step is a similar step that administ administrators of Windows systems might be familiar with when you unbox a machine. The first task that most administrators do is disable the local administrator account on the machine and promote a different account to becoming the local administrator. This prevents people from 
um, knowing the default administrator username in a system there and potentially guessing passwords associated. We do recommend disabling the PSA account to remove an alternate method of administrating ArcGIS Server outside of your own enterprise users there, because we do recommend using an enterprise user and promoting one of those enterprise users accounts to your administrator to make for auditing and accountability ease. To disable the PSA, we simply go into Home, Security, PSA, Disable in the ArcGIS Server Administrator Directory. This next slide is important to understand in ArcGIS Enterprise. That involves feature layer, security, and editing. And this is a feature that you'll see in the ArcGIS, in the portal for ArcGIS home application when working with feature layers. If you enable editing, understand that the following users can always edit. Owners of the item, administrators of the ArcGIS Enterprise instance, and members of a group that the item belongs to that have update capabilities. Remember that when you enable editing and you set that access to anyone who can access the service, including anonymous users, you may be opening yourself to edits that are improper. Be sure to review the options for who can add, update, and delete features who can only update feature attributes, and who can only add new attributes, and use the principle of least privilege to determine what kind of edits individuals can use. Be very careful when enabling anonymous access on a service and enabling edits at the same time. Be sure you have strong QA, QC layers in place in your workflows to validate that information added to feature services is accurate and correct. Next, let's discuss portalscan.py, or excuse me, serverscan.py. Serverscan.py is a Python script in the ArcGIS server installation directory located under slash ArcGIS slash server slash tools slash admin. Starting at ArcGIS 10.7, 15 different settings are checked. This generates an HTML report that makes recommendations to improve security. And it categorizes those findings based upon severity, critical, important, or recommended. We provide help links for each finding. Serverscan.py is compatible with both Python 2.7 and 3.x. Serverscan.py can be scripted to run regularly, and the results can be placed in a virtual directory because it produces an HTML output report, making it easier for administrators to review the items that are caught by the script. Let's review a sample of the output from the Serverscan.py script. As you can see, uh, critical items like HTTPS being disabled are validated here as well as important items and recommended items, including uh, uh, items that we just discussed, like update and delete operations available to anonymous access. Let's proceed with our agenda, where now we'll be talking about the Portal for ArcGIS component of ArcGIS Enterprise. As before, we're going to discuss the importance and how to configure HTTPS communication only. Similar to before, we'll discuss uh, the sharing API and how to disable the portal directory. We'll discuss limiting the ability to restrict proxy access for ArcGIS Enterprise, which should be a number one takeaway from this discussion here. We'll discuss how to disable the create an account button on the sign in page, restricting cross domain requests. We'll discuss what trusted servers are and how to configure those and we'll go over portalscan.py. The first thing that we need to do is to validate that our portal requires access through HTTPS only. Similar to ArcGIS Server, this setting is configured by default 
at 10.7. This setting is configured in the Settings tab of your ArcGIS Enterprise instance. Next, in a production environment, we want to consider disabling the ArcGIS portal directory. Similar to ArcGIS server's REST, portal, uh, REST directory, the portal directory provides a browsable HTML-based representation of all portal items, services, web maps, and content. Also provides ways to search for users, portals, and other items within the portal available through the sharing API. Esri recommends disabling this option to reduce the chance that your items can be browsed, found in a web search, queried through HTML forms, or otherwise enumerated. The portal, is the portal sharing API, or the portal directory, is disabled through the ArcGIS portal administrator. Similar to before, when we disabled the portal directory, you can see that the options available have been obfuscated. In this case, the portal services directory is disabled through the update security configuration tool in the portal administrator API under home security config update security configuration. To do this, we set the disable services directory property to true in the JSON representing the current security configuration. This next concept is really important for users to understand, and that's restricting machines accessible by the portal's proxy. By default, Portal for RGIS ships with a built-in proxy server that is used in some scenarios to access resources on different machines. Those are used in the context of when services from remote RGIS server sites are added with stored credentials like Arches Online Premium Services or Secured Services from some remote GIS server. Uh, they're frequently used when adding OGC servers to your content, and they're used to access services from non-Cores systems, non-Cores enabled systems, where uh, Jeff will discuss that uh, a little bit later on, if he hasn't already. And uh, what's, what's, what's important to understand is that by default, because we do not know where from your portal will be consuming services, the portal proxy is unrestricted. An unrestricted proxy can sometimes result in, in vulnerabilities called SSRF, uh, that's server-side request forgeries, and also cross-site reflected forgery types of issues. We strongly recommend that users lock down their proxy. This is an important and powerful measure that can impact existing items if not correct, if not performed correctly. In these cases, you want to make sure that you validate the remote sources that you that are being consumed and allow those sources disallowing others. This is documented in the Arceus Enterprise best practice details. Restricting proxies is again performed via the RGS administrator directory using the allowed proxy host parameter. This parameter does accept wildcards for subdomains. We'll want to configure the allowed proxy hosts option here to reflect the remote web servers that you want to allow proxy access to. When you enable this, other hosts will not be proxyable and less than until they are added to this list. Again, we strongly recommend administrators keep a tight lock and understand which websites can be uh, consumed via the portal through the allow proxy configuration setting. With this in mind, I'm gonna turn it over to Jeff Smith where he'll demonstrate this capability. Now, another security restriction that we can use within ArcGIS Enterprise is related to course restrictions. This is very similar to the restriction that we discussed previously on ArcGIS Server, where you can limit, in this case, 
you're not restricting the uh, course request to the services, you're restricting the course request to the items within Portal. Um, and again, this is, uh, the course is limited to external JavaScript uh, applications only. If, you, if you're not accessing the service or the item within a JavaScript application, these restrictions won't be uh, honored, won't be utilized. And very similar to ArcGIS Server, it, it is not, don't consider this an overall, uh, a means of overall restriction. In other words, like I demonstrated previously in ArcGIS Server, um, the item is still accessible, it's just uh, specific post requests or course requests will be blocked by the browser. So in this case, um, under organization and settings and security, under uh, the allow origin section, you can put in specific domains. Um, by default, it's empty, meaning it's open to any domain and, all, and actually open to all domains. Um, but as soon as you start adding a domain, then it's restricted to what you have uh, listed in here. And again, the, the idea behind a course request is, is very similar to what we described in server. But one thing to keep in mind, a, l a little bit different here, is how we handle course requests to a secured service. So previously, with the allow origins, we, we restrict, okay, what web applications can access individual items within Portal. That's great. But what happens if Portal, a web application on my uh, ArcGIS Enterprise or Portal for ArcGIS, needs to make a course request to a secured ArcGIS server service, more specifically, a service secured with web tier authentication that requires credentials to be sent. Now this is kind of tough to, to visualize and if, and if you aren't working with services secured with web tier authentication, this does not apply to you at all. But if you will be accessing services secured with web tier authentication, and by web tier authentication I mean uh, IWA or PKI, um, by default when a course request is made to these services, credentials are not sent automatically. As for security reasons, you wouldn't want credentials included with every single course request by default. So what we've done is we've, we've implemented this uh, security feature called, or this, yeah, let's call it a security feature, called trusted servers. These are servers that you do trust and you do want request, course requests that are sent to these servers. You want the credentials to be sent automatically to these. So I've got a diagram here kind of demonstrating how this would work. And this is very similar to a, uh, the diagram I had previously describing how course requests work. You've got your client, red br your client browser making a request to a uh, web map application within your portal for ArcGIS or your ArcGIS enterprise. That, rec that web mapping application references a secured ArcGIS server service secured with web to your authentication. And so I've indicated, in this case, with the little lock right there, that credentials need to be sent automatically um, since this is an asynchronous request, and the user would never be prompted to enter those. So in order for those credentials to be sent automatically, the, uh, the domain name where the ArcGIS server resides needs to be added to the list of trusted servers. Now, con uh, opposite, contrary from how the course requests are working, if there are no servers listed in trusted servers, that means credentials are not sent automatically to any server at all. Uh, you need to manually add them one at a time or a um, domain name at a time in order to support sending these credentials automatically. And this is where it's done here. Again, under the organization settings, uh, if you scroll down to security and trusted servers, you would just need to enter the uh, server, the first part of the URL, the HTTPS, and the server name. Randall, back to you. Let's discuss another important concept with ArcGIS Enterprise, and that's the ability for members to share content publicly. Administrators of the Portal for ArcGIS and ArcGIS Enterprise can restrict the ability for users to share items with everyone. This is an important idea. In a lot of cases, we really need someone to validate the information that we're going to be shared publicly through one particular pipeline, as opposed to allowing everyone to do so. 
Doing this allows for proper QA QC of the items that we're sharing and ensures that the content that we're sharing is authoritative and correct and reduces embarrassing mistakes. Next, similar to the serverscan.py script that we mentioned previously, Portal also contains a Python script that helps to validate your security stance. In this case, it checks for 12 different settings and generates an HTML report that makes recommendations to improve security. It categorizes these findings based on severity, critical, important, or recommended, and provides help, help links for each item to discuss the findings. A sample finding is here. As you can see, PS01, proxy restrictions, is the most critical item that we discuss here. Again, we should trust only specific proxied servers and not all servers that are out there. Note that both ArcGIS Server and Portal for ArcGIS include extensive documentation online regarding these best practices. I'll turn it over to Jeff for a quick demonstration. I want to get started in talking some more advanced topics that apply to both ArcGIS Server and Portal for ArcGIS here. The first thing I want to go over is the Group Managed Service Account. What is a Group Managed Service Account? For those of you who uh, are not familiar with them, it is, this is unique to Windows only, and it's a restricted Active Directory domain account. What does that mean? Well, it means this domain account, um, you can apply permissions to the domain account, but it can only be used in a few places on a Windows server. Uh, in this case, the, the key one here is that the logon as account for Windows services is where this account can be used. It can also be used in IIS, but uh, that doesn't apply in this case. Um, if you open up your Windows services and take a look at um, the list, the, the column, the logon as column on the right hand side, if you see a uh, a domain account with the dollar sign appended to the end, that's an indication that it is a group managed service account, or GMSA, as I've got uh, listed up here on the slide. So what are the advantages of using a group managed service account? Well, the, the key one is the fact that the password is managed internally by Active Directory. You are not required to have to change the password on a regular basis. This is done automatically. The password is, is very long, it's 128 UTF-16 characters, and like I said before, by default, it changes every 30 days. Without, you don't need to restart the service, you don't need to do anything unique like that. This all is maintained internally by Active Directory. So this prevents, in some cases, if you're configuring your Portal for ArcGIS service account or your ArcGIS server service account to use a domain account, in order to be able to access various uh, file sharing resources. Um, in the past, if the password ever changed or um, for that service account, you would need to go into your Windows services and manually update it uh, one at a time. This makes it so you don't have to do that. Nor do you have to use an account that, uh, with a password that never expires. Um, so this is, this is something that I know a lot of um, customers have been asking for, for quite some time, and we've implemented it now in version 10.8. Uh, it's available for ArcGIS Server, ArcGIS Data Store, and Portal for ArcGIS, um, actually, the entire ArcGIS enterprise. Um, again, with this account, it's restricted. You, no one can ever log in interactively with this account. If they were somehow able to retrieve the password, they wouldn't be able to do much with it. And the other nice feature about this account is it's restricted to a predefined set of computers. That means your Active Directory administrator will create an enterprise group uh, within Active Directory, link it to this uh, group managed service account, and the only members of that group are the individual computers that are able to utilize this group managed service account. So how do you use it in ArcGIS Enterprise? There are two places where you can use it. First of all, on a new installation where you specify the account used, um, you can now, there's an option to indicate that it is a, a managed service account. You put a check mark there and it will validate that it is 
a, managed, a group managed service account and you will not have to put in a, a, a password. You'll notice that those fields are left blank or are, are actually grayed out when you put a check mark next to the managed service account. Uh, additionally, there are tools within uh, all uh, within various components of ArcGIS Enterprise that allow you to reconfigure uh, the service account. This is under the, uh, the tools directory. And in each of those, you can also specify the group managed service account. One thing to note here, if you are upgrading from a previous release to 10.8 and want to use a group managed service account, you cannot make that change during an upgrade. You need to make that change either, um, typically I'd, you can make the change before, but it'd be easiest to make the change after the upgrade. And that way you can use the, the tool, the service account tool, in order to adjust it and utilize the group managed service account. Continuing on with some of our advanced topics here. Let's discuss SSL protocol configurations. Since ArcGIS 10.4, both ArcGIS Server and Portal for ArcGIS can be configured to limit which SSL protocols are accepted. Starting in 10.7, new installations of ArcGIS Enterprise use TLS 1.2 only. Note that this only impacts the communication with Portal, Server, and the Data Store over ports 7443, 6443, and 2443 respectively. Protocols used by the web adapter or load balancer must be configured separately as RGS Enterprise has no way to update the settings in these third-party configurations. Again, note here that in RGS Enterprise 10.7 and 10.8, TLS 1.0 is completely disabled. However, TLS 1.0 can be enabled if you have older clients that require TLS 1.0 and do not support TLS 1.2. That situation is becoming fewer and fewer as the years go by and as newer equipment is utilized. Note that some compliance activities, like PCI compliance, require that servers support only TLS 1.1 and TLS 1.2. Let's take a look at this configuration. Both web server protocols that are enabled and Cypher suites that are supported can be modified in ArcGIS server and, Arch and portal for ArcGIS. Both of these actions are done in the respective products administrative APIs. Users can pick and choose the ciphers that they choose to support because again some compliance efforts like PCI require specific ciphers and again if, if required users can downgrade their SSL protocol supported to support TLS 1.2, 1.1 and or 1.0 as required. By default we only support TLS 1.2 out of the box. Speaking of TLS, there's an important update that's happening this year in mid-September for ArcGIS Online. Because Esri is committed to ensuring that your content is secured, back in 2019, we switched to requiring TLS 1.2 in ArcGIS on, uh, Online. This year, we are setting a requirement for HTTPS only and HSTS, which is Strict Transport Security, to be enforced on September 15th, 2020. What does this mean for you? It means that after September 15th, 2020, all HTTP requests to ArcGIS Online will be redirected to HTTPS. Clients limited to only supporting HTTP only will fail. For instance, scheduled clear text Python scripts and items like that. HTTP only ArcGIS Enterprise deployments may have issues accessing ArcGIS Online services. Thankfully, we have tools that you can use to help out. First thing you should do is validate that your ArcGIS Online organization already uses HTTPS only. Newer organizations have been restricted to require HTTPS from the start. 
older organizations may support both HTTP and HTTPS only. You should launch the ArcGIS Online Security Advisor tool to check your org settings. You can find a link to that tool on trust.arcgis.com. If HTTP is enabled, use the tool to discover HTTP references and change those references to HTTPS. You should consider enforcing HTTPS only for your organizations as soon as possible and validate that all of your clients and scripts can use HTTPS successfully. And finally, keep an eye out for additional announcement and support guidance pages on trust.arcgis.com. Since we're discussing trust.arcgis.com, we should inform you of where you can report security findings that you may see from performing automated scans or having a pen test against your ArcGIS Enterprise or ArcGIS Online uh, organization. You can do that via the Report a Security but Concern button on trust.arcgis.com. We encourage users to submit items related to vulnerabilities found in our sites or our applications. If you receive suspicious emails from Esri, we welcome you reporting those items as well. If you encounter a privacy issue related to either our applications or our organization, those are important for us to address. We welcome you reaching out to us via this interface. Well, for any other security, privacy, or compliance related concerns that we can help out with, reach out to us via this Report a Security Concern button. That concludes our presentation for today. We hope you learned a lot. Feel free to reach out to us at softwaresecurity at esri.com or via the Report a Security Concern button on the RGIS Trust Center for additional information.